Zofi Global has recently published a study on the global cement industry, which has seen winds of change over the last few years. Volumes decreased for the first time in decades in 2015, although 2016 did see a return to growth. This dip in 2015 was due to a contraction in demand in one particular market, one which has become the centre of gravity of the industry, China. China drove 55% of global cement demand and volume in 2015. Given this huge share, it is unsurprising that the 5% contraction in Chinese demand in 2015, as economic growth and construction slowed, had a considerable impact on global figures. China's slowdown will continue to weigh down on the market over coming years. Although other developing markets combined cement consumption, which makes up around 30% of the global market, is expected to grow by around 4% from 2016 to 2020, and mature markets, which make up around 16% of the market, will see around 2% growth in demand in this period, the forecast 3% drop in Chinese consumption from 2016 to 2020 will almost fully offset this growth due to the huge size of its market. Changes have also been seen on the competitive playing field. Growth in the last five years has been particularly strong on emerging markets, less so on developed markets. This has weakened the position of traditional mature market leaders, while emerging market players have not only dominated their strong domestic markets, but have reached a great enough scale to go on the hunt for further expansion abroad, putting an increasingly large market share in their hands. European cement giants such as Lafarge, Holsom and Heidelberg Cement have sought solutions to such woes via consolidation. Lafarge and Holsom became one in 2015 and Heidelberg has followed suit with the acquisition of another top 10 player, Itali Cimenti, in 2016. The Lafarge Holsom merger has put the new entity head and shoulders above the rest in terms of capacity, well ahead of competitors Heidelberg or Cemex whose production capacity is only about a quarter of Lafarge Holchim's. Chinese group Anhui also has a relatively high level capacity, but predominantly caters to local demand. However, when it comes to profit, the Lafarge Holsom giant trailed behind its pairs in 2016, suffering losses due to merger and restructuring costs. It remains to be seen what rewards will be reaped from this merger. In the meantime, it is emerging market companies who are proving most profitable. Nigerian group Danyot Cement enjoyed an outstanding profit margin of over 38% in 2016, thanks to huge cement demand in emerging Africa, coupled with cheap and abundant raw materials. Chinese group Anhui, Thai Siam Cement Group and Indian Ultratech also saw double-digit profit margins. The principal concern for top-ranking global cement companies in coming years will be to remain profitable against a background of fierce international competition. This competition will be further heightened as Chinese demand slows and companies that previously generated considerable income from China must tap potential elsewhere. Cement groups will thus need to ensure they are well placed for growth, ensuring a local presence on high potential markets. This is particularly important in an industry in which the nature of the product makes transportation rates high discouraging exports. They must also offer value-added products and services and attempt to control each aspect of their value chains, especially at the retail stage. At the same time, so as to improve profits, they must improve efficiency by streamlining operations through the reduction of operating costs, notably by investing in state-of-the-art production technology, and consolidate and restructure operations.